good people, say hello to the OnePlus 7 Pro, the company's flagship smartphone for 2019. Actually, I think I should put some asterisks around that statement because you never know, they might actually come out with the OnePlus 7T or the 7T Pro later this year. Let's just, you know what? Let's just say that the 7 Pro is OnePlus's flagship smartphone to date. They brought some interesting additions to this device like the pop-up front-facing camera resulting in this notchless display, an additional ultra wide-angle lens, a beautiful AMOLED display with a high refresh rate, and some more. Now please don't consider this as a full dedicated review, but rather consider it as an informative one uh, so that you're aware of what's really new with the 7 Pro. I've only spent a couple of days with this device and I like doing smartphone reviews more like consumers, so you know expect our long-term review uh, in the next few months. So here's everything that you need to know about about the OnePlus 7 Pro, but first, let's take a quick look at our sponsor. The Liquitech 2 360 AIO cooler from Enermax now comes in this gorgeous white finish to give your PC a bit of character. The EF1 pump delivers superior cooling performance, it's both Intel and AMD socket compatible, and it features RGB lighting. Learn more about it down below. All right, so I just want to address something right out of the way, and that's the size of the 7 Pro. It's huge, guys. In fact, it's bigger than the 6T and I was struggling to hold that phone comfortably, so if you're in the same boat as I am, you're gonna have to get used to this. It's a 6.67 inch AMOLED display that now boasts a resolution of 3120 by 1440, so Quad HD Plus instead of the Full HD Plus on the 6T. So for you pixel geeks out there, this is a welcoming bonus. Oh, and the cherry on top of that is that it now features a refresh rate of 90 Hertz. So navigating through the UI is a bit more responsive and fluid. And if you game a lot on your smartphone, this will change everything. It's not 120 Hertz good as the Razer Phone 2, but hey, I'll take it over the standard 60 Hertz. Now I do need to point out that the edges of the display are curved on both sides. And honestly, I do feel like it's a bit more aggressive than the Galaxy S10. It's more reflective and actually quite distracting in watching content, especially in good lighting situations. So do keep that in mind. But other than that, this is a beautiful screen with awesome colors. Nothing to complain here. Moving on to the pop-up camera, I'm sure a lot of you have questions with regards to the durability because it's a motorized mechanism that pops up and down when you enable the front-facing camera mode. Now, OnePlus claims that they've tested this over 300,000 times to ensure that it's consistent in its operation. They've even added rubber grommets around the module to prevent debris from entering and stalling the motors. They've also used the accelerometer and the gyroscope to automatically retract the camera module when it's in free fall. So for those of you who take selfies in the most extreme conditions, like you're on the top of a mountain, you're trying to get that cool angle and you're trying to show it off, and oops, you just drop your phone because A, it's first of all a huge phone, so chances of you dropping it are a lot higher. You wouldn't have to worry about that anymore because the camera will automatically retract and it'll protect the lens module itself, so that's nice. I mean, they're trying everything that they can to make sure that durability is intact, and it's certainly something that I have to validate myself in the long-term review, so do certainly stay tuned for that. The one thing that I do wanna add on top of this is that OnePlus is trying to step out from their comfort zone. They're trying something new with the 7 Pro, uh, and I gotta give it to them, because it's certainly not the first phone to come out with this pop-up camera implementation. We've seen other brands like Oppo in the Asian markets uh, come out with the same technology, but it's a very first device, at least in North America, to feature this cool implementation, and I'm genuinely looking forward to your thoughts about that. What do you guys think about it? Now, the design hasn't taken a shift from the 6D, aside from the display and the pop-up camera. You still get the alert slider, which is nice, and it comes in three colors, mirror gray, almond, and nebula blue, which is the one that I have over here, and I love it. Quick note on the fit and finish, the first thing that I did notice is that this phone is heavy. I mean, obviously, given its sheer size, uh, you should expect that. Uh, I do love the frosted sort of matte texture at the back. It's certainly a lot better than the glossy uh, surface on the Galaxy S10, so it's not a big of a fingerprint magnet compared to that device, so that's nice. And it gives you a subtle grip, so it's certainly nicer to hold in the hand. Uh, but I would probably end up throwing a case on top of this because I do not want to drop this phone. I just don't. The 7 Pro has a triple camera setup at the back just like the Galaxy S10. So you get a 16 megapixel ultra wide angle lens, a 48 megapixel standard lens. But before you start jumping with excitement, keep in mind 
that the final image is in 12 megapixels due to pixel binning. Now, for those of you who are wondering what that is, it's essentially grouping four by four pixels into one huge pixel uh, that results in better low light performance. Lastly, there's an eight megapixel telephoto lens for that extra reach. And at first glance, the results do look pretty good. I mean, there is detail. Uh, the color reproduction is also really nice. I don't think you can say anything terrible about the cameras coming out of the stock camera app, but having said all of that, I can't wait to see what uh, Android or third-party developers can come out with, especially since the Google camera mod on 6D was a complete game changer. So I can't wait to see that roll out on the 7 Pro. It should certainly step things up quite a bit. Now, if you recall watching my OnePlus 6T review, I talked about how I had some issues with the in-display fingerprint scanner, uh, and that's partly because it was first-gen tech and it was actually a lot more slower than a physical reader. Software updates certainly helped improve the accuracy and the responsiveness, but uh, it just wasn't as fast as I'd like it to be. Now, what they've done with the 7 Pro is that they've actually increased the size of the scanner by 36%, uh, which actually results in a lot more accuracy when it comes to reading your thumbprint or your fingerprint. And having spent a couple of days with this uh, device, uh, it's noticeably faster than the 6D. So that's certainly a welcoming change. I mean, I can just do a simple tap on this device and I'm automatically uh, on the home screen or into my phone. So that's great. Taking a look at the rest of the specs, there's nothing really underwhelming with the 7 Pro. I mean, you get the fastest SoC from Snapdragon cooled by a 10 layer liquid cooling system that I'm really curious to test out since summer is right around the corner here in Canada. You also get up to 12 gigabytes of RAM and up to 256 gigabytes of storage that now uses the UFS 3.0 standard. There's also dual SIM support, unfortunately no expandable storage, and the battery has been upgraded from 3700 mAh to 4000, and it now supports Warp Charge 30. This technology was introduced with the OnePlus 60 McLaren Edition. It's a special edition device, and what it essentially does is that it charges your device from zero to 50% in just 20 minutes. So it's a lot faster than the fast charge method on the standard 6T. They've also improved the haptic vibration motor as well as implement dual stereo speakers with support for Dolby Atmos. So when you're consuming content, there is proper left and right channel separation. So that's certainly a welcoming change over the 6T. Now, for those of you who embrace wireless charging, I'm really sorry to break this to you, but the OnePlus 7 Pro does not support that feature, which is really disappointing. I was so expecting for them to include that on their next generation phone, but that isn't the case because I'm so spoiled by using or charging my devices wirelessly. And now I have to go back to plugging in the cable on this device. So uh, yeah, it's just, it sucks. And to be frank, uh, having, con having spoken to OnePlus, uh, they mentioned that, uh, you know, they feel like warp charge is the most fastest and efficient way to top up the battery on the 7 Pro because it's 4,000 milliamp hours. And if you try to charge it wirelessly, it just takes a lot longer uh, than warp charge. And that's kind of their argument uh, for not uh, not including that. Uh, I mean, if they come up with a faster solution to charge the battery wirelessly, they will certainly look into adding it on uh, their devices. But for now, it's just not there. And to wrap things up, there's the software, which has always been one of the main pillars of OnePlus's foundation. If you're an existing OnePlus user, you would know what I'm talking about. I mean, it's clean and super customizable, and it constantly gets updated, which is awesome. There are a couple of features that have been added to the OS, namely built-in screen recording, which does not have any limits like other third-party apps that you'd have to pay to unlock. Uh, you can choose your desired resolution and bitrate, and I do see myself taking advantage of this feature uh, in the long term. The other feature is called Zen Mode, and I really like this one because you know we're all tied down to our smartphones in our everyday lives, and it's sometimes a distracting factor if you're trying to have a conversation with someone. So what Zen Mode does is that it locks you out of the device for 20 minutes straight. So you won't be able to access your device, like you know, check your social media accounts or just do the things that you're normally able to do. I mean, you can make emergency phone calls and take pictures, but other than that, it's locked. I think this is a great feature because it helps you focus on other things in life, which I personally do value as well. So uh, yeah, kudos to OnePlus for including that. So with all of that out of the way, how much does the OnePlus 7 Pro cost? Well, it starts at $670 and you can obviously uh, configure it all the way up to $750 for the spec'd out 12 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. So it's certainly not cheap, guys. And I really want to know your thoughts about that in the comments down below. Do you think it's too expensive or do you think it's a great value for the features that you're getting? Because personally speaking, if I take a step back and look at OnePlus as a brand, they were known for making amazing smartphones, 
uh, for less than $500. They've even made phones for less than $400 back in the day, but now they've certainly break the barrier, uh, the $600 barrier with the 7 Pro, and they're trying to compete with the flagship smartphones out there like the Galaxy S10s and the ones from LG. So uh, you could either take it in a positive way or a negative way. It's certainly a lot cheaper than the Galaxy S10 for sure, because it's not $1,000, that's great. But, um, you know, when you look at the phone like the Pixel 3a that was just launched last week, it basically offers some the core features that you really need on an Android smartphone for $400. So if you're looking for just core functionalities, there are other phones for a lot less in the market right now. And I think the 7 Pro stays somewhere in the middle. I certainly have to test it out uh, extensively to give you guys my full thoughts on this device because I could end up running into a lot of issues like I did with the 6T. So who knows? We'll see. Definitely stay tuned for the long-term review. Uh, I also do want to quickly talk about the OnePlus 7 because that is something that a lot of you guys were looking forward to as well. Now, think of it this way. The 7 is just an incremental upgrade over the 6D. You're just getting updated specs in terms of your SoC. Your uh, storage capacity is now upgraded from 2.1 to 3.0 standard, and that's pretty much it. Now, from what I've been told, the OnePlus 7 is only available to buy in select countries. So in the United States, I think it's just going to be the 6D and the 7 Pro, uh, which are the two product stack up for the rest of 2019. So I hope you learned everything about the OnePlus 7 Pro. If you're interested in anything particular that you wanted me to test on this device, definitely let me know in the comments down below and I'll make sure to include them in my long-term review. I'm Ebro with Hardware Connects. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more smartphone content because it's gonna get too hot. I'm signing off and I'll see you guys in the next one.